The federal government cares about this case because this law has posed substantial threats to public safety. Uh, predisposed to put criminals in jail. And finally, district, liberal district attorneys. Just dealing with all these threshold issues, they're asking things that are extraordinary departures from this court's jurisprudence again and again and again. Figures. And this is something that we should celebrate, that today's gun owner is looking a little bit less like me and more like the rest of America. Licensing requirement. And then section 11 was your magazine capacity, okay? Legal battle over. The recent developments in the battle against the rifle and mag ban in Illinois have seen the U.S. Supreme Court denying review and emergency relief in the case. This refusal has left millions of Illinois residents facing potential criminal convictions and penalties due to the ban. Despite efforts to challenge the ban through cases like Calkins v. Pritzker and Nagger v. Naperville, which contest the constitutionality of the Protect Illinois Communities Act, courts have been hesitant to intervene. The PICA imposes restrictions on the purchase, possession, and acquisition of rifles and mags, along with a registration requirement for grandfathered arms and parts. Failure to comply with the registration deadline could lead to serious legal consequences for residents who choose not to register their firearms. Despite initial success in an Illinois state lower court, which declared the ban unconstitutional for violating equal protection under the law, the decision was later reversed by the Illinois State Supreme Court. Now, the case is returning to the Illinois State Supreme Court, where plaintiffs seek new relief. The lower court's ruling had recognized the fundamental right to bear arms under both state and federal constitutions, subjecting the challenged legislation to strict scrutiny, which had failed to satisfy. However, the reversal by the state Supreme Court has left residents in a precarious legal position. Concerns have also been raised about potential conflicts of interest, with some Illinois State Supreme Court justices receiving contributions from parties involved in the case. This adds complexity to the legal battle and raises questions about the impartiality of the judicial process. Despite these challenges, plaintiffs are determined to continue fighting for their constitutional rights in the face of an unjust ban. Supreme Court Gun Regulation The recent Supreme Court order denying relief to litigants challenging Illinois' ban on semi-auto attack arms and a similar ban enacted by the city of Naperville marks a momentary victory for arm regulation advocates. These litigants argued that both bans violated the Second Amendment. Had they prevailed, such a decision could have had significant implications for attack rifle bans nationwide. However, this victory is likely short-lived. The case, National Association for Gun Rights v. City of Naperville, was decided on the court's shadow docket, a mechanism for handling emergency motions and other expedited matters without full briefing or oral argument. The order suggests that a majority of justices did not see the case as warranting expedited treatment, rather than signaling their stance on attack rifle bans. The federal government cares about this case because this law has posed substantial threats to public safety. Being persuasive, the things like analogies to uh, regulations of Bowie knives and billy clubs and slung shots. Listen, we've been on this journey together. We started uh, like last September, I started covering ballot measure 114. I uh, predisposed to put criminals in jail and finally district, liberal district attorneys. Notably, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, a conservative member of the court, has historically supported legalizing attack weapons. The case will proceed to a federal appeals court in late June, where a decision will be made under the ordinary process for hearing cases. Although the Supreme Court may review this decision, the brief order in the Naperville case highlights potential disillusionment among key justices regarding the frequent use of the shadow docket. This order does not indicate a definitive shift in the court's approach to armed policy, Rather, it underscores a reevaluation of the use of the shadow docket and suggests a preference for more conventional processes for handling legal matters. As such, while arm regulation advocates may celebrate this temporary victory, the broader implications for attack rifle bans remain uncertain until the case progresses through the appellate courts and potentially returns to the Supreme Court. Shadow Docket Expansion during the Trump administration, the Supreme Court saw a significant increase in the use of what is commonly referred to as the shadow docket. This term encompasses emergency motions and other expedited matters that the court decides without the full briefing or oral arguments typically associated with its regular docket. 
Historically, the court had been cautious about intervening in cases before they had been fully litigated in lower courts, preferring to wait until all relevant arguments had been presented. However, under the Trump administration, the Solicitor General filed numerous applications for stays and emergency relief with the Supreme Court, bypassing the usual procedures. These requests aim to block lower court decisions unfavorable to the administration's policies. Surprisingly, the court frequently granted relief in these cases, often resulting in victories for the Trump administration. Just dealing with all these threshold issues, they're asking things that are extraordinary departures from this court's jurisprudence again and again and again. Judge Rascio today has issued a permanent injunction in joining all of ballot measure 114. Figures. And this is something that we should celebrate, that today's gun owner is looking a little bit less like me and more like the rest of America. Declaring the 2022 ballot measure 114 unconstitutional. The trend of increased reliance on the shadow docket continued even after Justice Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation to the court just days before the 2020 election. Following her appointment, the court issued several significant shadow docket decisions, including the landmark case Roman Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn v. Cuomo. This decision expanded the ability of religious conservatives to seek exemptions from state laws, signaling a departure from the court's traditional deliberative process. The aggressive use of the shadow docket during the Trump era raised concerns among legal experts and commentators. Critics argued that this approach allowed the court to make far-reaching decisions without proper consideration or opportunity for public input. The court's willingness to issue major rulings through the shadow docket without the usual deliberation marked a significant departure from its historical practice. The increase in shadow docket activity during the Trump administration demonstrated a shift in the court's approach to handling emergency matters and highlighted concerns about transparency and accountability in its decision-making process. While the court's use of the shadow docket may have provided expedient resolutions to pressing legal issues, it also raised questions about the integrity and legitimacy of its rulings. Shadow Docket Restraint Barrett's and Kavanaugh's opinion in Doe's v. Mills marked a notable departure from the court's previous approach to the shadow docket. They expressed concerns about the growing trend of deciding cases too quickly without adequate deliberation. One concern raised was that litigants could exploit the shadow docket to push the court into addressing legal issues prematurely, effectively circumventing the ordinary process of lower court litigation. Additionally, they highlighted the inherent problem of deciding significant questions on a short timeline without the benefit of full briefing and oral arguments. Supreme Court heard arguments today on the Second Amendment Preservation Act, which is a new law. Go do the reading yourself. Um, the judge did get into very, very thorough, detailed. The Supreme Court heard both sides of the argument for the Second Amendment Preservation Act on one side. Licensing requirement, and then Section 11 was your magazine capacity, okay? There is certainly one of them. President Biden's uh, self-inflicted border crisis continues to wreak havoc across the country. Critics might question the timing of Barrett's opinion, especially given the shift in presidential administration from Trump to Biden. During the Trump era, the court readily granted expedited relief to the administration's request, but this enthusiasm waned under Biden. Despite this skepticism, there's evidence to suggest that Barrett and Kavanaugh genuinely believe in a more cautious approach to the shadow docket. Recent decisions indicate a newfound restraint in shadow docket cases, even when it conflicts with Republican policy preferences. The court has denied relief in cases involving COVID-19 vaccination mandates for healthcare workers and laws prohibiting transgender athletes from participating in school sports teams aligning with their gender identity. Moreover, they declined a shadow docket request challenging an arm law, suggesting a shift away from immediate intervention in politically charged issues. This evolving approach indicates a willingness to prioritize judicial deliberation over expediency, even if it goes against partisan interests. The court's recent decisions demonstrate a trend towards greater restraint in shadow docket cases, with considerations extending beyond ideological affiliations. However, whether this trend persists under future administrations remains uncertain. For now, Barrett and Kavanaugh's call for a more cautious approach to the shadow docket appears genuine, 
reflecting a broader reassessment of the court's role in deciding urgent legal matters. Legal Battle Over The legal landscape surrounding arm regulation in Illinois is complex and contentious, with several cases raising questions about the constitutionality of attack arm bans and related restrictions. One such case involves allegations of judicial impropriety, with plaintiffs claiming that two Illinois Supreme Court justices received significant contributions from defendants linked to the attack weapon ban. These allegations have raised concerns about potential bias and conflict of interest among the justices. After the Illinois Supreme Court upheld the attack weapon ban, plaintiffs sought relief from the U.S. Supreme Court. However, the emergency requests were denied, signaling the reluctance of the higher courts to intervene in the matter. Despite this setback, plaintiffs are exploring other legal avenues, including seeking traditional writs of satiriorari in the U.S. Supreme Court. Additionally, multiple cases related to arm regulation are being heard at the lower court level, where Judge McGlynn is overseeing expedited reviews. The legal proceedings in these cases highlight the complexities and challenges inherent in litigating arm regulation issues. The involvement of high-profile defendants and allegations of judicial bias add further layers of complexity to an already contentious legal landscape. While plaintiffs continue to pursue legal remedies, including appeals to higher courts, the ultimate resolution of these cases remains uncertain. Overall, the legal battle over arm regulation in Illinois underscores the importance of judicial independence, fairness, and transparency in the legal process. As these cases continue to unfold, they serve as a reminder of the need for careful consideration and adherence to legal principles in addressing complex and contentious issues such as arm regulation. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.